How do you know if you have scoliosis? Understanding the signs of scoliosis is the best way to understand if you may or may not have scoliosis. And in children, what we know, normally look for is postural changes. And usually this is the earliest sign that we look for. In adults, it's not posture, it's actually pain. So in, depending on age is what the signs that we look for. Posture changes are typically caused when the spine shifts out of alignment and the scoliosis starts affecting the overall body symmetry, and it normally affects what we see. Scoliosis is a progressive condition, and typically, typically as these postural changes move into the adult form and it starts to compressing, it can start leading to pain. Now, when we look at posture deviations in children, what we're looking for primarily is something that I like to say is any type of asymmetry in the outline of the body. We look at for uneven shoulders or uneven shoulder blades. We look at development of any type of rib asymmetry, either in the front or the back. We look for uneven hips or uneven waist. We look for arms or legs that appear to hang differently or have different spacing. And this type of asymmetrical outline in the body is the number one thing that we see in children that helps bring on a diagnosis. Now, pain it normally tells us that something is wrong within the body, and it can normally lead to some type of diagnosis or treatment associated uh, with any type of condition. Now, scoliosis, as it progresses in the adult form, it can start to compress because as curves progress in the adult form, gravity compresses down on the scoliosis, causing the curve to progress, and this causes compression of surrounding muscles and tissues. But scoliosis doesn't become this compressive nature in causing pain until the adult form. This is why we don't see children experiencing pain as they develop scoliosis, because what's causing their curve normally to worsen is growth or elongation. So children normally never experience pain as a result of the scoliosis. Now, it's not always 100%, but like 90, 95% of kids with scoliosis experience very, very, very little pain. And if anything, it's very, very mild. In fact, many times parents will discount the treatment associated or needed for scoliosis patients because they say, oh, my child has no pain, so why am I going to treat it? We don't expect children to have, scoli have pain as a result of scoliosis. In fact, the largest curve I've ever seen has been a 155 degree curve, and this child had no pain associated with their spine. So it's hard to believe that curves can become that severe and that scoliotic, and they don't experience any pain. However, for adults, the exact opposite is true. The number one symptom associated with scoliosis and especially scoliosis diagnosis and scoliosis treatment in the adult form is pain. And that's because it's compressing and it's not really related to the size of curve. It's how much you progress in the adult form. So patients that maybe stop growing with a 20 degree curve and say they progress to 30 during the adult form, they have a 30 degree curve, may have significant amount of pain. Where an adolescent that progresses to 60 degree curve and say they hold it at 60 degrees their entire life may experience no pain, even though the curve is twice as large. So the pain is associated with adult progression, not necessary size. So we can see adult patients with relatively uh, smaller curves relative to adolescents and have significant amounts of pain. Typically, the pain starts off as general stiffness and general back pain at the site of curvature, but it can definitely evolve and become much more serious and much more significant as these curves get bigger and causing more compression. Most likely, it starts affecting low back, causing pain into the legs like sciatica type pain, most commonly into the left leg. It can start affecting upper extremities and hands and arms if the curve is higher. It can also lead to weakness, fatigue issues. It can lead to the ability, not ability to stand and walk for long periods of time because of endurance or lack of endurance. So scoliosis progression can start causing lots of things and it can biomechanically lead to other orthopedic problems like hip, knee, and feet problems, just like an underlying car will affect the tire negatively in a, way, in a negative way. Now, the only way to truly know if you have scoliosis is to be professionally diagnosed by somebody who focuses on scoliosis ideally, and that is having your spine assessed to see if there actually is a scoliosis. But if you're seeing posture asymmetry in an adolescent and we're seeing posture asymmetry in an adult with pain, these are high indicators that there's possibly a scoliosis. Now we know scoliosis involves an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine and there must be a rotation associated with this curvature, making scoliosis a true three-dimensional problem. This rotational component must be there for there to be a true, true scoliosis, and the rotation is always into the concavity of the curvature. 
In addition to the rotation into the concavity, there also must be a curvature or a cob angle that's measured on an X-ray of 10 degrees or greater for it to be officially called scoliosis. However, I've seen patients with eight or seven degree curves that I truly have rotation to still be diagnosed with scoliosis because the patterns are still there. But normally, 10 degree cob angle with rotation into the concavity on some type of scoliosis image to tell us that we truly have scoliosis. Now, other than postural changes and pain associated with compression, what are some other signs to, of scoliosis to watch for? One big thing is something that we call changes to balance and coordination. Changes to balance and coordination can happen for a couple of reasons. One, as the spine is growing, it's growing less symmetrically, that it can affect something we call body awareness and proprioception. And this body awareness and proprioception is affected because the body is not aligned in space. Also, as curves worsen, they get stiffer. And as it gets stiffer, the body's harder to move into it in its natural way, which can also affect balance changes. And it can also affect something that we call gait. Gait is the way you walk. And instead of walking symmetrically, because you have a symmetrical body, you start having this asymmetrical gait where things start striking differently. You have a different type of heel and strike on one side versus the other. Your gait is altered because of pelvic alignment and tilt, and you may affect your knees. And you're starting to see these changes in gait. And of course, long-standing changes in gait can lead to other types of orthopedic concerns as patients go through the aging process. In addition, we can see uh, clothing become ill-fitting. That, that because of the asymmetrical body and asymmetrical torso, this asymmetrical outline that tends to happen, clothes tends to fit, not fit the same. So you see, as curves become, as clothes becomes less fitting naturally, that typically means the curve is progressing. So if you're diagnosed with scoliosis, really what's what should you do? And really the most important decision is how do you choose to treat it? Traditional approaches. Now, I like to say traditional approaches, like normal traditional orthopedic approaches, normally use something called a watch and wait approach. They wait for curves to become severe enough where they can warrant a surgical treatment like spinal fusion, which is a non-functional treatment because it is fusing the spine into one solid bone. It is taking a natural movement and flexibility of the spine and fusing it so it's exchanging movement for alignment. And there's a lot of debate which one is the person better off with? This fused spine that's straighter but non-movable or a more curved spine that's more flexible and has more motion to it. And the truth is for long-term results, we really don't know which one's the best approach. The other type of approach is to be more proactive. And being more proactive is to try to treat a curve before it progresses into its severe standards. Therefore, you never have to consider surgery. These two different treatment approaches foundationally can affect what you end up with as a result of your scoliosis. So choosing this path is also very important because the way you choose to treat it is gonna really depend on what results you're gonna end with over a period of time. We know scoliosis is a progressive disorder and we definitely are pro you being aware and we're also pro of early detection. But I believe early detection is only important if you're going to treat early. If you're going to detect it early and still let it worsen and still let it progress to where it becomes a surgical level curve and your end treatment ends up being surgery, then finding it sooner, sooner didn't really help us because you're still ending up with the same result, which is surgical intervention. Now, we know we can never guarantee results, but we know when scoliosis is treated early to its diagnosis and we treat it when it's less complex, less severe, less rigid, we know that the idea of there being a positive outcome is more likely. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.